NBA Live 07 is a fascinating case study when it comes to the basketball game genre. It's a game that had to deal with a console transition while also facing pressure from the competition of NBA 2K and NBA 07, as well as Mario Hoops 3 on 3. I'm kidding, I'm sorry. NBA Live had to do something to separate themselves from the competition, but what? Hey what's up guys, it's Kofi here. If you're watching this video on YouTube, follow me on Twitter. And if you're watching this on Twitter, subscribe to me on YouTube. Today we're talking about NBA Live and how they went overboard with an idea that seemed good on paper. With a lot of sports gamers just wanting to play the best game on the market, NBA Live needed something that made it stand out from the evolving and changing competition of basketball gaming. The Xbox 360 was already here and the PS3 was on the way. It was time for NBA Live to take their game to what they thought was the next level. They introduced an integration with ESPN, added more depth to their Dynasty mode, and a new gameplay system that I could diagnose and analyze for hours if I wanted to. However, in this video, I'm just gonna harp on the Freestyle Superstars part of the game. The game mode that was rewarding in some parts, but frustrating everywhere else. Here's why. In my Shaq 2K7 video, I talked about how the individuality of the players was important to getting us to where the games are today. In the basketball games of old, everybody shot the same, dribbled the same, and played the same. NBA Live tried to tackle this problem with freestyle superstar abilities. NBA Live realized that some players did certain things better than other players and wanted to reward them with special animations. And yeah, like when you put it in that way, that seems totally fine. When freestyle superstars was added in NBA Live 06, there were six abilities. Shooter, scorer, playmaker, high flyer, power player, and stopper. That was fine for the most part. But in NBA Live 07, they decided to take freestyle superstars to the next level, literally. They decided to expand the categories from six to eight, turning scorer into inside and outside scorer and stopper into inside and outside stopper. In addition, they decided to add levels. There were star types and superstar types for the players that were better than the star types. Last but not least, NBA Live realized that some players were versatile and fell under multiple categories. To counter this, NBA Live pitched the fact that you could switch between icons as the great big ad for freestyle superstar controls. However, these changes weren't as effective for a number of reasons. One, looking back on the fly skill switching in a basketball game is a pretty weird concept to incorporate. In a game where you have a 24 second shot clock and every move you make is important, not many people have a chance to change what icon they are without wasting time or affecting the game. And most of the time while you switched icons, both things happened. While you spent time changing your icons, your focus shifted away from the rest of the court. This was the video game equivalent of trying to text someone while also having a conversation with the people in front of you at the same time. Also, this was the perfect way of telegraphing what move you were gonna try to do if you were playing with a friend. Like, Freestyle Superstars was actively telling on you throughout the entire game. Imagine if you were playing FIFA and you had to switch icons that made Cristiano Ronaldo a fancy passer, you switched it to affect his dribbling, or tried to affect his shooting, all while trying to actually play the game as it was still going on. Are you guys seeing how this wasn't ideal at all? The second thing that made this feature frustrating is that the rest of the gameplay did not help Freestyle Superstar at all. Overall, it was a step back from NBA Live 06 in my opinion. The animations were choppy and the players were sloppy. Also, splitting up the dunk and layup commands for two separate buttons may have been the dumbest of all these decisions. Between having to decide between dunking the ball or laying it up, on top of having to think about changing superstar abilities on the fly, this game became more confusing than it had to be and it was tough to take seriously. The more superstar abilities a player had, the more time you spent switching icons and trying to control them. And it kind of took the fun out of it sometimes because it's not supposed to be like that. There are a lot of missed layups, missed dunks, and weird animations that would often pop up in the game. And all the players that like didn't have superstar abilities were basically worthless to you. You felt compelled to spam with these superstar players because other than that, offense and defense was kind of a tragedy in this game. 07 also had a thing called X Factor where you could activate a star level ability for a player that like doesn't have it normally. And you had to activate that ability by getting them involved in the offense enough. But like, what was the point of this? Like, 
it's not an interesting enough incentive for me to run an offense through James Posey for multiple possessions. That's not why I bought this game. Let me cool off. The fact is that this was a step back for many NBA Live fans, and the fact that NBA 2K7 experimented with none of this made this a pretty bad look for NBA Live. Even though both versions of NBA Live are frustrating, the game was way better on PS2 and Xbox in comparison to Xbox 360. NBA Live 07 didn't even make it to the PS3, which is probably for the better because the Xbox 360 version is absolutely terrible. Freestyle Superstars was an honest attempt at making the stars actually play like stars, and I respect that. But unfortunately, the series had to figure out the hard way that this wasn't really a good idea. Now, if you ask NBA Live fans, they're either going to tell you two things. One, that this game was really good, or this game was really bad. And I'm on the fence about this. Growing up, NBA Live 07 was the most fun experience I've had with a broken game. And what I'm saying is that it was fun to do all those windmill dunks and flashy passes and fancy layups. However, if you wanted to play an actual serious competitive basketball video game with your friends, you would pop in 2K7. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, feel free to like this on YouTube, subscribe, comment. And if you're watching this on Twitter, feel free to retweet and comment below and then subscribe to me on YouTube. Again, I love each and every one of y'all and I will see you guys next time. Later.